How is it going? Hope everyone's doing well and thank you for tuning in this video. Today I'm here with my review of WWE Payback 2020. So without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and jump right into things. Now, of course, before the main show started, we did have a kickoff show one hour prior to the event, which featured the Riot Squad taking on the Iconics. I did not watch the kickoff show, so I did not see this match. All I know is that the Riot Squad got the victory. So considering it happened on a kickoff show, I thought I'd go ahead and mention it. But then we go into the main show, which opened up with the United States Championship match from Paulo Cruz defending against Bobby Lashley. I thought this was a good match. Um, they were both evenly matched, which I really enjoyed. It's, it's good to see a match where it's, you know, back and forth, back and forth, not like, you know, dominant, you know, the heel working over the face or the face giving up her hand. Uh, it was evenly matched, and I really enjoyed that aspect of this match. Uh, you got some big power moves. You know, Paul Cruz uh, was outsmarting Lashley. You know, anytime Paul Cruz tried to set up for the sit-out power bomb and, you know, uh, Lashley fight out of it, uh, Paul Cruz would think quickly on his feet, whether he's, you know, hitting some German suplexes, and then Seguri followed by, you know, the standing moonsaults uh, for some nice near falls. Uh, there was some great stuff by uh, Paul Cruz here. Almost with a victory after a huge frog splash from Lashley, which was a great near fall. Uh, but Lashley was able to hit some powerhouse moves of his own. Um, you know, hit a huge choke slam at the end to follow up for the uh, the full Nelson, which got the submission victory. Bobby Lashley is your brand new United States champion submitting Apollo Cruz to win the United States championship. So... Yeah, like I said, it was a good uh, match from you know uh, by both men. Their styles are very similar. They're both big men, but they can move very quickly. They're very agile for guys their size. So I uh, thought considering their styles, it meshed very well, and it was a fun, evenly uh, paced back and forth match. So and uh, yeah, Lashley, new U.S. champion, all for it. Loved afterwards where you know MVP was you know uh, yelling at the photographer to take photos, and they're airing on the the screen like the photography pictures rather than the live feed. I thought that was a great little touch for the hurt business, but. Yeah, all four Lashley's U.S. champion. I thought it was a good match, and uh, yeah, great for her business as well. Um, from there, I'm going to go to Big E taking on Sheamus, which I thought was a good, uh, hard-hitting match between both men. Uh, Sheamus just working on the leg of uh, Big E throughout the entire match. Uh, Big E had his comebacks, trying to set up, set up the apron spear a handful of times that, you know, Sheamus was able to put out of it. Uh, Sheamus, you know, whether it was a cloverleaf or, you know, a version of the stretch muffler, Sheamus was doing whatever he could to work on uh, Big E's leg, because that was a great story, so... Uh, these two went out there, uh, had a great just slugfest, and um, yeah, I thought I thought it made it to a really good match. Big E at the end was able to hit his apron spear, which I uh, popped huge for because he doesn't really hit it that often. So to see him hit it was great. Uh, back in the ring, is going for the um, uh, big ending, but Shane was actually countering to a huge running knee, which sounded like he just ripped off Big E's head, but that was a great running knee. Uh, Shane was up for the brogue. Uh, Big E's able to counter into a power bomb. Uh, at, at one point, and then uh, Biggie at the end end up hitting uh, the big ending for the one, two, three. Biggie defeats Sheamus. Like I said, good hard hitting match. Enjoyed it. I uh, thought it was a great storytelling too with Sheamus. Uh, not Sheamus. Oh, well, yeah, well, Sheamus was involved. Sheamus was working on Biggie's leg, leg but that was a great storytelling with uh, Biggie's leg and Sheamus uh, working on it. I thought Sheamus definitely did a great job working on it as well. So, yeah, it was a fun match. Enjoyed it, and uh, got a huge win for Biggie as well. So, yeah. I like that match. And then, of course, we go to Matt Riddle taking on King Corbin, which this match was kind of a, a similar match to that one, just not as good as I thought. Um, obviously, you just had Corbin, you know, uh, working over Riddle, uh, putting him in chin locks, head locks. Uh, you know, your typical Corbin match where it's kind of just holds, 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 and towards the end, uh, that's when the match picks up. Uh, Riddle starts working on, you know, uh, Corbin's ribs, uh, kind of soften him up so he can fight back. Uh, Riddle's able to hit... Uh, the bro to sleep followed by the floating bro uh, for the one two three get the win over King Corbin so yeah uh, the match was what it was it was fine um, wasn't as good as the Biggie Sheamus match but it was similar to that match uh, I, I there's like a watered down version of the match I should say so that's the best way I can compare it but it was fine uh, Corbin Riddle so it was what it was Riddle gets the win thankfully because I was worried that they might actually have to win the Corbin so. Thank God, really got the win. So yeah, uh, the match was it was fine. Like I said, it's a watered down version, kind of the Biggie Sheamus match. Prior to it, uh, from there I'm gonna go to the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match, Bailey and Sasha Banks defending against Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Honestly, I had a lot of fun with this match. I thought it was really good uh, right from the get go. Um, you know, it was fast paced. You know, Shayna Baszler working over both Bailey and Sasha Banks. Uh, Nia Jax getting the tag and working on both of them. Uh, Nia Jax getting taken out when they drop kicked her off, and you know Nia Jax was selling her leg. Uh, so it was kind of, you know, Shayna Baszler fending for herself for a good little while. Uh, eventually, the numbers game caught up to Shayna. Uh, Bailey and Sasha did some tag work, which some of their stuff came off pretty sloppy. Uh, so I don't know if they're trying to cue that into the story of the miscommunication or if they're just legitimately just messing up. But uh, either way, uh, they did some tag team work on Shayna to isolate her from, um, isolate her from uh, Nia. Obviously, because Nia is still on the outside. Uh, obviously, Nia would get back in the ring. 
uh, just end up destroying Sasha, where she just end up just swinging her into the barricade back and forth. Uh, back in the ring was Domino over Bailey. Uh, Shannon gets the tag back in, uh, trying to take out Nia. Uh, Nia ends up getting up her hand. Uh, she gets taken out by Sasha and Bailey in the ring. Shayna, uh, she takes out both uh, Bailey and Sasha by herself. Puts Sasha in the Muda Lock. Puts Bailey in the uh, the clutch. And then submits both of them. So Shayna Baszler, fantastic finish. Absolutely loved it. Shayna looked like a complete badass taking both of them out. Uh, so yeah, she submits both Bailey and Sasha Banks. So Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are your brand new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. I'm not surprised. I just didn't really want to go with that route because we've seen that story so many times. Uh, you know, tag team partners that don't di that dislike each other somehow work together, become tag team champions, and they end up becoming a tag team and working out whatnot. So we've seen the story so many times. I just didn't care to see it with Nia and Shayna. But honestly, uh, seeing them as a tag team, I had a lot of fun with it. I thought you know their uh, styles, how different they are. Uh, can mix for a fun tag team, kind of how Dana Bryan and Kane were, how they're completely different, but they made for a very entertaining, fun tag team. And I feel like maybe you can kind of get that with Shayna and Nia. So, um, yeah, I don't think it was the right call, though, for not for uh, Sasha and Bayley to lose them now. I think you could have uh, stretched them out as tag team champions for a few more months before having them lose it, and then, of course, having the singles match. But I guess they want to get that match out of the way now. So it was bound to happen. I just wish they would have extended it a little longer, like I said. So... Yeah, I don't really mind uh, Shayna and Nia as tag team champions. Uh, I wasn't for it, but you know what? Um, at this point, I'm, I'm willing to see how it plays out. So, really good match. Like I said, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. And uh, yeah, very uh, very surprised to see Nia Jax and Shane Baszler as the new tag team champions. Uh, from there, I'm going to Rain Jordan taking on Keith Lee. This match was very short. You know, uh, Keith Lee right from the get go just blasts Lord Nia out of the ring. Uh, you know, Lee trying to be dominant over Orton. Orton just chops Lee's chest. Lee's no selling it. Chops the shit out of Orton. They go to the outside. Orton gets upper hand. Uh, does the uh, does the, the uh, announce table spot where he dumps Lee onto the apron, onto the table. Uh, gets dominant over Keith Lee. Keith Lee has his comeback. It dumps Orton onto the table. Uh, back in the ring, Orton ends up hitting the DDT. Sets up for the RKO, but Keith Lee counters that into a spear bomb. And one, two, three. Keith Lee defeats Rain Jordan clean as a whistle in the middle of the ring in about seven minutes. Uh, wow, that was definitely huge for Keith Lee, especially considering Rain Jordan's arguably the best run of his career. Uh, that was a huge win for Keith Lee in, in a matter of minutes, too. That was that was a big deal. Drew McIntyre couldn't even beat Rain Jordan. I mean, he beat Rain Jordan clean, but he couldn't even beat Rain Jordan his finish. So the fact that Keith Lee did a week later, that's very storytelling. And, uh, you know, it definitely tells you that they have big plans for Keith Lee, you know. Given they, he didn't have the greatest presentation on Raw this past Monday, uh, they definitely made it for it at a payback with uh, him beating Rain Jordan the way he did. So uh, you can definitely tell he was very emotional afterwards, man. You can definitely tell there was tears coming. He was very emotional beating Rain Jordan. And yeah, huge win. And hopefully that leads to huge plans to keep please. So the match was fine for what it was. Uh, it did what it needed to do. So no complaints from me. But yeah, huge win for Keith Lee. Like I said, just hopefully that means they have huge plans with them and they uh, stick with them. So yeah, that was all, all around great stuff. Uh, next, we go to Ray and Dominic Mysterio taking on Seth Rollins and Murphy. Uh, match of the night. This was a really fun tag team match right from the get-go. Uh, anytime these four competitors are in the ring with each other, you, you get good stuff, and that's exactly what you got here with all four again. I thought it was a very fun tag team match. Ray Mysterio, man, for how old he is, this guy moves like he's absolutely still in his 20s or 30s. He's, he's fantastic, and uh, he looked great in this match here against Rollins. And uh, just the way uh, Ray called out Rollins, too, he's like, come on, you son of a bitch, let's go, you little punk. Uh, I just I thought his trash talking to Seth is always fantastic. Uh, well, not like fantastic, it's good, but it's just it's funny uh, how Ray should talk Seth. But uh, Dominic showing some aggression right from the get go, attacking uh, Rollins and Murphy before the bell even rang. So I thought that was great, uh, you know, to show him being the aggressor for once, you know, really showing that he wants to get his hands on, on them. Uh, but yeah, it was all around fun stuff. Dominic continues to impress. Uh, him and Murphy had a good exchange. Uh, one spot I love was where Murphy helped uh, uh, Seth hit a, a Falcon Arrow onto Dominic, which that was a great spot. Uh, so an all-around really fun tag team match towards the end. Uh, looks like Rollins is securing in the victory. You know, he's trying to set up uh, Rollins, uh, Ray for the stomp. Ray is able to avoid it. Uh, Murphy accidentally ends up kicking the shit out of Rollins, which takes him out. Uh, leads to Ray hitting the 619 onto Murphy, followed by the Frog Splash by Dominic and 1-2-3. Rey Mysterio and Dominic are your winners over uh, Seth Rollins and Murphy. Like I said, really fun, uh, just really fast-paced match, and 
just kind of the, the chaotic craziness you've gotten in the previous uh, Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins matches where it's kind of just all over the place, but it's a lot of fun and you, keep, you can't keep your eyes off it. So really fun storytelling. And, you know, Rollins continues to be fantastic at his current character. I thought he did great. Uh, just the way he conducts himself. I thought he did a fantastic job. And Dominic definitely impressed this match as well. So, yeah, I wouldn't mind, honestly, Ray and uh, Dominic as Raw Tag Team Champions sooner rather than later, honestly. So maybe it's the direction they're heading in. Who knows? But really fun match. Like I said, honestly, I thought that was match at the night. And then, of course, we have the main event, which was the No Holds Barred Triple Threat match for the Universal Championship. The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, defending against Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Right before the match even starts, the Fiend's making his entrance. Braun Strowman attacks him, so the referee says, fuck it, and just rings the bell. The match starts, and it's pretty much Fiend versus Braun Strowman. Uh, Strowman hits up with running power slam immediately for a two count. Uh, Fiend hits Sister Abigail immediately for a two count. Uh, they fight into the outside. They go up into the stage area where they brawl. Uh, Strowman ends up, you know, kind of just spearing him off the, the stage. So they sell for a little bit. Uh, back in the ring, uh, the Fiend's got his mallet. He's hitting Strowman with it. Uh, Strowman doesn't carry. He's using chairs. Uh, Strowman back in the ring. He goes up to the top. Looks like he's going for a splash. Fiend stops him and hits a superplex, which at that point, the ring implodes because for some reason, if someone's over 380 pounds, if you take a bump off the top rope, you must you know collapse the ring. So that's exactly what happens. The ring collapse. Uh, poor little Nate, Charles Robinson, goes flying out of the ring, which was absolutely hilarious. So both men are down. And of course, here comes the big dog, Roman Reigns, to save the day. Uh, he comes out with uh, Paul Heyman. Uh, comes in the ring, yells for a referee, get his punk ass down here, a new ref comes out. Uh, Roman goes for the pin on the Fiend, Fiend kicks out, tries to pin him again, Fiend kicks out. Pin Strowman, Strowman kicks out. Uh, they go up for a little bit, Strowman's trying to set up the spear for the Fiend, but the Fiend puts him in the mandible claw. Uh, Strowman gets back up, uh, the Fiend gets taken out. Uh, Roman Reigns ends up pinning a spear on Strowman. Uh, one, two, three. Roman Reigns is brand new Universal Champion. Um... I don't know why they booked the match the way they did. Like, I understand Roman coming out late, but his whole thing is to wreck everyone and leave. He comes in and immediately tries to scramble and get pinfalls. And he's like, oh, man, that wasn't a three. Like, you immediately make him look like a cowardly heel by trying to, like, freak out getting pins. Uh, but then he goes in the ass kicking mode. Then he kicks their ass afterwards. But it's just like, he could, he should he should immediately came out and like, get both their asses up, beat the shit out of both of them real quick for about a minute, and then pin them, then won. But that's just me. But, yes, Roman Reigns, brand new Universal Champion. No complaints. That's where rightfully where it should have been. Uh, honestly, have me change until Mania. That's probably what they're going to do, so don't mind it. Uh, Roman Reigns wins, takes the title, walks off, poses, and that's it. So, Roman Reigns, Universal Champion, uh, makes that championship feel important again. I actually feel like I care about the Universal Championship. So, uh, yeah, definitely was the right call to put it on him. So, yeah, all for Roman Reigns, Universal Champion. He'll probably get a match against The Fiend, and uh, hopefully that'll be it for The Fiend in the Universal title scene because I'm absolutely sick of seeing him in it. He's pretty much been in that title scene straight for the past year. So get him out of it. I'm tired of it. So whatever. But overall, I got to say for payback, I thought the show, uh, it was, it was a solid show. I liked it for what it was. There wasn't anything really bad in the show by any means. Uh, everything I would say was at least good. There wasn't anything bad on the show. So, uh, for a week long worth uh, build and, uh, you know, for a week to build the, to make the card, uh, I thought they did a solid job. So Payback, uh, gets a thumbs up. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a solid show overall. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please feel free to leave a like below. And of course, next time, I'll see you guys then. Thank you guys for watching the video.